Oh, wake up, everybody. It's that, Shit. It's that special time. It's pit at night, Uncle Bill. We had not done one for April. Uh, or oh, It's August. It's not April. <laughs> yeah, it's August. Not. We haven't done one for April either, I don't think. But. We probably didn't do one for April. No. So this this show counts for August and April. That's right. That's right, Bulls. I'm excited, though. I'm not excited about the topic, but I am excited about the fact that we're doing one. Yeah. I'm excited about the fact that there's not too many people streaming alongside us tonight because we were looking uh, looking up. I don't know if anybody is streaming, right? I think the only person that's streaming is Christian. Oh. Which I didn't. Well, he normally does right. hit up, uh, I think Friday nights is his normal time, so maybe we're uh, getting in on his territory. But we can't just wait around and you know hope that nobody's going to stream that we know because it's – it, it always happens. Hell, Dana streams seven days a week. That's right. I mean, like, there's always somebody streaming at any given time. So we just have to just do what we can, man. And he usually, I think Christian started streaming at like 10 or something anyway. So I don't think that, you know, we're really encroaching on his shit. Yeah. So this is kind of just a laid back sort of deal. We want to do a kind of a tribute as well to uh, there's a couple of wrestlers, a couple of our favorites uh, passed away. One was a total shock, but we're going to get into that. And if you're not a wrestling fan, have no fear. Cause this is kind of like a ask me anything stream as well. But, you know, I did feel that we should mention these guys on the show too, because it is kind of huge news now. And huge. We're, we're both big wrestling fans from way back so makes a lot of sense for us to talk about that too so but that's not all we've got more right i want to open that Timu package finally i'm fucking sick of waiting on you, you kiss my ass oh yeah. I, I ordered shit from Timu. you probably should just go ahead and open that yeah why didn't you, you fucking tell me you didn't order nothing in you piece of shit i don't know you just kept getting on to me i was like scared of you so i just I like yeah ordered. i don't I ordered it. It'll be in soon. You so I scared to I want to unbox it because uh, it looks uh, like a fucking <laughs> package of shit. So you probably should. Well, I've had this thing for over a month, Timu package. So I'm going to unbox it at some point during the night as well. Do that. I'm ready for uh, it. Lots of people in the chat already want to do a, a little bit of a roll call here, and I am using a new microphone. So if anybody is over anybody else, just let us know and we can adjust it because I, I can never tell. That's the one thing, like, I wish maybe I should shoot them an email at StreamYard and be like, look, we need level, like, levels actually on the screen yeah. where we can, you know, mix everybody and make sure everybody I've sounds. noticed this, man. Have you noticed this? I'm not sure if this has anything to do with that or not. Have you noticed how some streamers have the microphone that actually has, like, the headphones plugged into the fucking microphone but that's high tech we can't we can't Have get you to seen that. that though we can't get to that level yet you're talking about the um yeah i think it's like a that's a usb microphone though you really don't want to i think the one you're talking about is unless it's a different one i mean i've just noticed like some of the bigger streamers like that's their setup like they, they've got a microphone that's kind of mm -hmm. like it like the one you've got but they've got their headphones mm -hmm plugged into the fucking microphone itself. So I'm not, I don't know if they're like hearing exactly what's coming out. I don't know how that works, but like, well, this one is a, like uh, it's stellar and it's an X three, but it doesn't have a microphone port on it that, or I mean a headphone port on it yeah. that I can see, but I'm kind of testing it out tonight. I still have, and I'll probably continue to use this thing, uh, but I'm just testing this one out. Uh, for possible voiceover work, boss, because I want to voice over some trailers and make some more money on Fiverr. Hey, let me tell you this. Mm, Keith Morrison is going to die soon, and I want to replace... No, I'm just kidding. I love Keith Morrison. I don't know why I know, there, there's not filmmakers that use you know, him for movies and stuff. He's got a killer voice. That's true. He's amazing. Was he on anyway. Dateline or something? Yep. Anthony is in the house. Late night stream. You got that right, pal. So, Anthony, I want to let you know this real quick. I actually wanted to ask a favor of you, too. I I never really ask a favor of you or anything like that, but yeah. 
I'm currently on eBay selling my Silent Hill PlayStation uh, game, my Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 original PlayStation games on there. So I don't know if you're interested in any of those, but they're on eBay right now. But uh, I don't know, maybe if you could give it a shout out <laughs> that I'm selling that shit, because I know a lot of people that probably listen to your stream would be interested in that. Now, are you putting it up auction style or is it's it auction now? style? Yeah. Well, you can you can do uh, oh. I think either or for the Silent Hill one. You can do buy it now or you can do auction or you wait for the auction to run out. Yep. Interesting. I've been selling some stuff lately. The uh, Sarah did it. Now, she completely found this on her own. I was not with them or anything. It was Degrassi High, the complete series DVD sealed. And it's like $2.99 at Goodwill. We just sold it this past week for $75. So that was a pretty good one. Hell yeah. Yeah. And um, I'm trying to sell some random stuff to make room and all that too. Some records and records. I need that's the next thing I want to start selling too. As soon as I figure out like some packaging to ship those fucking things in, that's the next thing that's going because a lot of these vinyls. Well, you just need to give them to me that way you don't have to fool with it. Yeah, I'll give you the first crack at buying them sons of bitches. What ones are you going to sell? I don't know. Quite a few of them back here. A lot of the stuff. Wax work like, and models, oh okay but, soundtrack yeah. stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've got I've got some amazing like regular vinyls too, but I'm not. Did your dad collect vinyl and stuff? Yes, he did, and I've got like his entire collection over here too. So any like some of his stuff's amazing. I'm talking about like German Beatles first presses mm. uh, that that go for quite a bit of money. I'm talking about like any kind of classic rock stuff that you can think about. Yep. I actually scored a bunch of vinyl tonight at Goodwill. Um, it oddly enough, they had more than Barry Manilow and Olivia Newton John. Uh, you see that a lot, and a lot of like uh, church bands and stuff like that, and gospel and like um, Herb Albert. Yeah, bluegrass for some. They reason. had uh, uh, whipped cream and other delights there tonight too. I died laughing. I was like, I probably should buy it, but I. I've already got a couple copies. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, it's stuff like there's four Kansas records in there. They all were like, obviously, whoever had these kept them on a shelf since the 70s. Like, yeah, there was some Willie Nelson. I got Wet Willie's Greatest Hits, which I didn't know they had multiple ones. You know, I've heard a couple Wet Willie songs. Um, Daryl Hall and John Oates, the Metallic album mint for a dollar piece so there's some decent stuff i guess marshall tucker band all that masters of the 80s what is up sir movie junkie john yeah cheers to one of the baddest mofos ever in wrestling and film the funker i was thinking about that today too man yeah so are you do you want to keep like just um Going through some questions, or do you want to start the actual part about that? It's whatever you want to do. We can always go back to to the live. So I was just thinking, like, that's one of the very few guys that I can think of, talking about Terry Funk, who had, like, different huge parts of his career but never really got over in WWF. Like, there are very few guys that that really happened to. I mean, he was in WWF. He never really got over and got like a huge like run or anything like that in WWF, but he did uh, in WCW and he did in ECW and he did in the independent like circuit too. Right. He had like huge runs in those, in those outlets. But like, I was thinking like some of the matches that like he had, man, and a lot of the ones that I remember, the ECW ones too, like the freaking, what was the three-way match that he had with uh, the night that they crossed yeah, the line was, or something uh, like that? The Shane night the Douglas, line was crossed. Shane Douglas was part of the match. And was it Sabu? Shane Douglas, it Sabu. Sabu and, and, and Terry Funk, yeah. yeah. What about the barbed wire match with the barbed Sabu wire, and Terry Funk? Yeah, that was amazing. The match yeah. he had on Raw with fucking Mick Foley was amazing. I don't know if you remember that one, like the hardcore matches that he had at that time period, too. Yeah, I remember like when he came 
it's Chainsaw Charlie, and everybody was confused. It's like, what in the hell? <laughs> but I think the whole thing was he was just wanting to have wild, like, you know, he was doing what FMW and like crazy Japan garbage matches and stuff, and kind of, kind of wanted to use a different persona. I think, I think that was the idea. But uh, yeah, you're talking about a guy, man, that started wrestling in the '60s. Yeah. So, so in his fifties and sixties, man, he was still doing like oh, hardcore matches and stuff. It's just insane to think about that kind of thing. Like I can barely get up out of the bed nowadays without spraining something. He's like dumping thumbtacks all over the place. Just right. like what in the world? Yeah, I think he was one of those guys too that just ultimately didn't give a shit. Yeah. Like he he definitely had that mentality where let's go, boys, let's go. So I mean, a lot of that early Terry Funk stuff, we didn't get to see because we weren't born yet. So he wrestled right. the 60s, seven, you know, 60s really through the early 2000s, I think, is when he quit finally. Um, but yeah, threatened to retire probably dozens of times over the years. Um, you remember the they made a whole event out of this. I think it was like a tape or maybe even a pay-per-view. This was back in 1997 when he was supposed to retire. And they had guys from ECW, WCW, and uh, WWF at the time all coming together to celebrate his career. And how long ago was that? That was close to what? That was 25 years ago? <laughs> That's the funny thing about it, yeah. He's another guy like Flair that just never could retire until he got to the point where he had to. He just didn't have any choice. Like, he couldn't get in the ring. Speaking of Flair, though, that goddamn uh, Clash of the Champions match that he had with Flair is another classic. I don't remember which Clash of the Champions that was, but that was like, that was a great match, too. I mean, he had a lot of great matches, like in different, like I said, different places. And that's not even getting into the stuff that he did, like back in the day with Dory Funk and all of them. So, yeah, it was a um, wrestling family, though. His dad was a wrestler. His brother somehow is still alive. His brothers looked. His brothers look like 65 years old for 30 years. So I don't know how old uh, Dory Jr. is, but yeah, Terry, he was 79 um, when he passed away a few days ago. And, you know, I'm, I'd heard stories that that he was having issues and stuff, and he was yeah. maybe like dementia, stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, it's always sad, even though the guy had a long life and everything. Uh, definitely a, a legend in the wrestling business and acting as well. Like, you know, Rambo mentions over the top roadhouse. Yeah. And roadhouse. That was the big uh, ones. I think Yeah, he was, I think he was on like a lot of TV shows and stuff back in the day too, which I should have looked at that, but yeah, he, he did, you know, his fair share of acting and all that. Um, I think he had though, too, um, a great promo. Because all his promos were like, he didn't necessarily yell because he couldn't really yell because he had that soft ass voice, but like he had that craziness about him that was that like seemed legitimate and he would always like end up like beating himself up or cutting himself or something. His fucking promos were crazy, man. Yeah. They just like go wild at the end of them. Uh, and um... I miss that. The Dusty feud back in the days. Yeah. Leg sucking dog, Dusty Rhodes, fat ass, or whatever he called. Yeah. He probably didn't call him that. But. He didn't call him fat ass, but he did the, uh, yeah, talking about everything else that was. The crazy. Dusty Sucks Egg shirt, too, which is on uh, shop.deadpit.com. All the proceeds are going to Dead Pit, but, you know. Yeah. We're celebrating the memory of uh, Terry Funk and Dusty Rhodes. And if you we've... remember too, like, I mean, just in, in moments in time that he was a part of, he was a part of that damn, uh, hell in a cell match with the undertaker and mankind. Cause he's the one that actually checked on Mick Foley to make sure he was alive <laughs> after yeah. he got choke slammed through the top of it. So, I mean, he's, he's like been in all these different parts of history, like the wrestling history. It's kind of crazy, man. But yeah, tons of different generations through the business and everything. And I think honestly, without Terry Funk, how far would have ECW have gotten without him? Because he was like the big name that they had there. Yeah. 
through the from the mid nineties to to when they got on that pay per view for the first time. And then, you know, that was kind of, he kind of was wrapping things up with ECW then and went to, you know, he went back to WWF and then WCW. He had another run in WCW. So, but without him, I mean, I don't know how successful ECW would have been back in the day. No, I think that was like one of the biggest, biggest reasons for its success is like having him because he was like one of the only old school guys that would do shit like that. Like him and Foley around that time period were the only guys that, that were like, legitimate guys that weren't made by ECW that would do that kind of stuff. And then they got, you brought everybody in the world in at some point or another to ECW that didn't like need to be in there for they? five minutes. They were yeah. there, you know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, Terry, I Funk, didn't re- definitely, I didn't what remember Marty Jannetty was there, man at all until they did that dark side of the ring and he was in ECW. I don't remember that time period whatsoever. Yeah. But he was. Yeah. Yeah. Sid was there. Dusty was there. So a lot of people were there for a cup of coffee, at least, you know. Yeah. Uh, Handshake and a cup of coffee, bulls. Did Dennis Stamp pass away, too? I didn't hear about that. Who the fuck is Dennis Stamp, bulls? <laughs> he was the guy that didn't get booked to uh, be at Terry Funk's retirement show in 97. It was on that. Oh, the mat. oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> to get get me into the wrestling mood, though, just to set it up for you guys, I have Super Tape 4 playing on my TV here. I just now got to see The Undertaker versus Tugboat, which was pretty awesome. <laughs> and yeah. you were mentioning Marty Jannetty, right? Uh-huh. So, yeah, the Rockers, Shawn Michaels and Marty Jannetty, or one of them is, I think it's Shawn Michaels, is wrestling demolition crush. Let me ask you a question about that too. Like, why do you think that demolition crush didn't get over? I think honestly, man, I think it could have got over. I don't think they really did much with it. Like remember just, when I think that the idea was they wanted Axe to kind of be the manager and Smash and Crush was going to be the, the team because Axe, even then, I was 30 years saying, ago, yeah, he was old. old then. Yeah. It's hard to believe that guy's still alive. He's still alive, isn't he? Yeah. He, yeah. yeah. But I just always wondered that too because they inserted him in there and it just, you think it would work. Because he, you know, I mean, you think anybody they put in that with the makeup and anything like that would work? Big jacked up, roided up guy like that. It just didn't work. He Ryan very... says that Crush was too tall. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> Maybe. And I thought like that too different. Than, <laughs> I yeah. liked when I was a kid. I liked Kona Crush. Didn't you like Kona Crush? I don't even think I liked Kona Crush when I was a fucking kid, man. I you really don't like don't. The, those bright colors. I guarantee you, Garrett loved Crush. Kona Crush when he was a kid. That just seemed like such a bad gimmick even then for some reason. Yeah, like the Bill Ray Cyrus mullet going on. Like the, the worst and finishing move ever, the head crush or whatever. Yeah. When he turned heel, he had the the heart punch or something, that's, didn't he? He did the heart punch, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, get back to Terry Funk, though, man. Like, it's always sad when you hear, you know, something like that happens. But it's not... When he's 79 years old, not a total surprise, really, right? Yeah. But a couple days, or actually less than 24 hours later, we got the news from Triple H is where I heard it on Twitter. And I was like, it's one of those deals when I see that, I look at at it a few times. Because, you know, I saw that he had posted that uh, Wyndham Rotunda, known to WWE fans as Bray Wyatt, passed away today and we're talking about a guy that relatively good shape good condition and everything he's a wrestler he's got good cardio yeah but we found out like a little later on what had happened i mean evidently he had a minor heart issue that turned into a major heart issue after he had covid but he was ready to come back like that was the thing he was originally booked to come to SummerSlam, but plans had changed and all that. 
and just kind of, I mean, I don't know, maybe we'll hear more details, um, had a heart attack at 36 years old and passed away. So it was very shocking, really, um, just the fact that, you know, he's a younger guy, and he it's not like he had been sick for a while. I mean, he was out. He didn't get cleared to wrestle or anything. So to me, this is kind of like a surprise out of nowhere, really. Yeah, I mean, you could have, I mean, never predicted that to happen, man. That guy was so young and like nothing. I'd heard probably a week before that, that there were rumors that he was coming back at SummerSlam and he was going to like, you know, have a new gimmick and all this different shit. So nobody was thinking anything like that. Like they knew that he was sick. They, they Everybody thought he was just like ready to come back. So that was crazy. That still is crazy to think about. And I kind of feel bad though for, I mean, not just because he passed away, but because I feel like that's one guy that absolutely kind of got screwed over by Vince. Like yeah. he, he was as popular as anybody else when he first came out with the fiend and that character and everything and the Wyatt family and all that. And they just never would do anything with it. Like they, I think they would go overboard with it and do stuff. That's just fucking ridiculous. Like when Randy Orton set him on fucking fire and shit. Well, like- it, he, he had a lot of what I would say are like close encounters with greatness that just didn't, go anywhere so he had like a couple opportunities and they just i don't know i mean you can point to a million different guys like that that vince is kind of like right up to a point and then really like just kind of sours on him for some reason. i mean really the peak was the white family i think for him i and think so too yeah when they were doing the stuff with the shield and i think they main evented that raw and the people were freaking going nuts because the Wyatts were the heels of the group, yeah. I guess, but they kind of weren't either. They were like the cool heels, you know, so the people didn't really know who to cheer and who to boo. Um, I'll tell you, my, though, another... Two of those guys is gone, man. I know. I'll tell you, another another time period that he could have been huge was when he was doing that fiend gimmick with... Uh, and he did the thing with John Cena, and then he kind of like... Yeah, uh, they they did all that and like he was really getting hot around that time and really kind of trying to figure out that character and then like they put him with Alexa Bliss and that kind of got over for a minute but then it got really fucking stupid and then they started like doing a thousand different things with it and the Firefly you know all that stuff Firefly Fun uh, Firefly Funhouse and all so that, that stuff. five times fast really and then it just kind of yeah, and then Braun Strowman coming in. Everybody yeah, they, thought that was a they good didn't idea. need anybody else. It's not his fault per se. Yeah. They just didn't need. They didn't need anybody else there. They did bring um, Eric Rowan was at the show tonight, the SmackDown show. I don't know if you watched oh, any wow. of that. I didn't know, but that's great. Yeah. Yeah, he was. He was there, and Braun was there too. He's injured right now, but he showed up. Um. But, yeah, I mean, man, like, the last match that he had was against L.A. Knight at the Royal Rumble earlier this year, and that was it. Like, I think he caught COVID in February and had been out, had, had that issue since then. And like we were saying, initially, they were thinking that he was going to be back at SummerSlam. So, it's crazy that this happened, but it kind of takes me back to, you know, 20 years ago, 25 years ago when this was a regular thing and thank God, like now a lot of the active wrestlers are not just fucking like falling dead and shit like they were then. And this obviously wasn't like a drug issue or anything like that. Right. Um, but yeah, this was a very, um, which I was really honestly surprised. It wasn't, if I'm being honest, like, cause I thought it was going to be something like that, man. Nine times out of 10, it is. so Yeah, or suicide or something like that. I mean, you never know. You don't know how these people are behind the scenes. So, But, yeah, that sort of thing happened a lot in, like, the the late 90s, early 2000s. So, yeah, it's good that it wasn't that. But at the same time, it's still shocking that this happened and that he was such a 
beloved character, merchandise mover. And like you were saying, he could have done so much more. Um, only 36 yeah. years old. I feel like that he was the kind of guy that could have like a Matt Hardy kind of thing, you know, where he had like a second complete win, a second completely different, you know, set of character and then like get over again like that. Like he definitely could have done that, man. And, you know, for him to go from the gimmick that they first had him in, <laughs> which was, what was he called? Um, Husky he, Harris. Husky Harris. Yeah. Yeah. When he first came in to finding that whole Wyatt thing and then the fiend and like, I mean, he went through so many iterations that it, and a lot of them worked really well. It's just, I just don't think they knew what to do with that guy. And I wish that they had like a better idea because I feel like he could have been a lot, a lot bigger. He could have been the heel in that company. He just. Yeah. I mean, he was champion and yeah. oddly enough, he was the universal champion uh, before Roman Reigns. So Roman Reigns has had that belt since he beat Bray Wyatt for it. So it tells you how long, how long that was. Yep. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, yeah, somebody mentioned Tom Savini. Uh, Tom Savini, and I think I've got this guy on Facebook, Jason Baker is a makeup effects guy that worked and, and did a lot of uh you know, the Fiend stuff and the White family stuff and everything too. So I think he may have trained with Savini and then I don't know. But yeah, Savini did have something to do with some of that, I believe. He was, uh, Witch Hunter says he was meant to wrestle Bobby Lashley in this year's WrestleMania. Hell, oh, that fucking sucks. That's another guy, man. I can't stand Bobby Lashley. Like, <laughs> yo, why do they still fucking like, mess with that guy i do not understand that like he's a huge roided up guy i get it vince loves it but like he just cannot he's never he's a physically impressive looking guy i mean you gotta say there's not too many yeah, people look but like i mean that. there's a ton of guys like that out there that are in wrestling but he can't he has no personality whatsoever and he never has he didn't have any eyebrows either that's true <laughs> no personality, no eyebrows, eyebrows, brother. Maybe that's why, because you can't have any expression really with, without eyebrows. So you want to go uh, back through some of these questions here? We've missed a while. Yeah, we might as well. <clears throat> Movie junkie John, foot pile driving flare on that table and not breaking it. It's still funk. Did I say fuck? Or you, funk? Said, you said fuck. Fuck pile drive, buddy. Fuck the fuck driver. Driving. Yeah, yeah, I remember uh, that. That was like um, back in those days. They didn't have like those press board tables. It was like real wood tables. Yeah, and, and he you, he did the type of pile driver too, where he'd like grab your tights and kind of just fall backwards. You know what I mean? Rather than like just jump up. Bro, it's a right wolf is in the house. Of course, he's asking some uh, unrelated questions, but it's all good. I read on IMDb that Jack Nicholson, Tom Cruise, the only two actors that have worked with both Stanley Kubrick and Martin Scorsese. Hmm. Interesting. I did not know that. Ryan Brown, the strangle mania VHS. That was a popular one back in the day. And um, yeah, I mean, we need to mention like the cactus, Jack, Terry Funk feud, the king of the death match finals. Everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's that was nuts. Like I remember when I was trading wrestling tapes, that was one of the very first ones that I got because WWF was actually even talking about that back in the day. They had clips of it, so I'd kind of heard about it, but never seen it. And that's that's a crazy freaking show, man. That's like a re like a wrestling show. It took place on fucking the you know some other planet or something. <laughs> Satchel ass. Um, lots of people posting on here. Yeah, Adam said that he got to see Bray Wyatt wrestle John Moxley at tribute to the troops in 2015. That's really cool. Gary wants to know if we're doing a uh, 
giveaway tonight for those end of the pit DVDs. Not tonight. We may do like a giveaway at some point. I'm not prepared to do a giveaway right now, though. You need to do a giveaway. Now. We gotta, we gotta right get now. prepped and everything to do that, Uncle Bill. There's a lot to it. We gotta get juiced up, brother. Wes Ray says that IMDb is stating that Funk is Bill Bob Thornton's cousin. I'd never yes. heard that. That's true. That's a hundred percent true. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but it'd be fucking killer if it was. <laughs> you would think that Billy Bob would have got him in a movie or something. Billy Bob. That's my cousin, Billy Bob. He's a you son of a bitch. Trash. Predminator. What is up, sir? I didn't grow up watching Terry Funk, but it's still sad to hear about him also being part of the wrestling family and such. Yeah. Yeah. Terry Funk was also an XPW. I'm sure he doesn't really want to remember that. No. That was the one that had like all the porn stars and everything in it too. Wasn't that the same one? That was like an ECW ripoff. I think it was, yeah. Yeah. I've got some of those fucking DVDs somewhere, like XPW stuff. Now, this is a tough one from Bronson Wright Wolf. Okay. Who is your favorite or least favorite vampire? Vampire. Eddie Murphy is Maximilian in Vampire in Brooklyn. Holy shit. Johnny Depp is Barnabas Collins in Dark Shadows. Robert Pattinson is Edward Cullen in Twilight. Hell. That's like so that he's right. That's like ridiculously hard. I'm gonna go with Who's the, I hate I hate all worst. those movies, by the way. The worst still to me is Robert Pattinson in Twilight. I'm going to go with him being the worst. I'll say Johnny Depp is the second best. And then the best out of those would probably be Eddie Murphy, even though all those movies suck ass, man. I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen Vampire in Brooklyn more than one time. And that was back when the VHS came out. So, yeah, Robert Pattinson, you can't get much worse than that. He'd definitely be the worst. I don't know about the best. Lynx uh, 595 says, get a dream, hold on to it, shoot for the sky. Oh, that's a good idea, Carter. I actually hadn't thought about that. What? He gave us a $5 super chat to watch the uh, New Jack Bit Grimes scaffold match. <laughs> that's a good idea, really. I've never even thought about that. Yeah, that's a crazy match. Appreciate the super chat, buddy. I always love that interview they did with New Jack where they asked him about that. He was like, he's like, yeah, I was trying to kill him. <laughs> he's like, I don't give a shit if he fucking broke his neck. Didn't he uh, Didn't he almost get what? blinded or something like that? That's why New Jack took, like retaliated. Didn't he, Dick Grimes almost blind him? It was something where like he was supposed to jump off of like, you know how New Jack jumped off of like the fucking uh door frames when you walked into arenas or whatever he yeah. was supposed to jump off that with him and he he messed it up somehow and didn't and he pulled like new jack pulled him on top of him mm. and somehow or another it like hit his skull and according to new jack now if you believe new jack it called like caused him like to hemorrhage cerebral spinal fluid and all this shit and lose vision and stuff so he said like the next time that he saw him like that he was gonna <laughs> fuck him up and that was the next match that they were in, I guess, was that scaffold match. The uh, Let's see. Adam is asking, do y'all think Edge is going to AEW? What do you think, Uncle Bill? I've heard that. I heard that they're not going to, like, really try to extend his contract or anything. Like, I can't imagine that, though. Can you? I mean, Christian's in there. They could put back. Yeah, but, I mean, he can't be Edge there. What would he be? Just Adam Copeland or whatever? That'd be awful. Like, mm-hmm. here's my thing with AEW, and I know that they're doing a big successful like show in London or whatever. But man, like it makes no difference who they get. Their numbers don't go up. No. The show doesn't get any better. No. I just gave up on it. Like I can't do it. It just there's no point. There's no reason for anybody to go back and continue to watch the damn shit every week. 
random match after random match each week. There's some dude that ain't been on there in six months. And then he's gone again for a few weeks. Like they don't have the same people on there. It's like random shit after random shit. And then I just gave up on it. I've lost all the interest in that, that show. Yeah. So, I mean, I never, I, I've probably tried to watch it a little bit there when punk first came back and then I kind of realized what it was going to be and just, kind of stopped i know there's a lot of diehard like fans of that show and people that watch it like religiously still to this day but i just find it to be a giant clusterfuck man whenever i've tried to watch it it's just been a mess like it is honestly like it was way better in the first year when they had 20 percent of the people that they've got now um but, you know, they've got too many people. They've got too many shows. There's no storylines at all in any of this shit. They've got Chris Jericho's on there too much. John Moxley's on there too much. It's just not. It doesn't interest me anymore. Can't do it. I tried. Uh, West Ray says it's a shame Demolition didn't jump to WCW. Lots of great feuds that never happened. The Horsemen, Doom, Freebirds, Steiners, the Hollywood Blondes. Yeah, but they couldn't be think? called Demolition. All right, let's go through this. The classic era of WWF, right? We're talking, in my mind, like that would be the golden era, which would be between like 83 to like 92. Okay. Who do you think were the best tag teams? The Road Warriors, the best freaking tag team. I mean, as far as probably not in the ring, but they were the team. That was a team that nobody wanted to fuck with. All the people in the crowd were probably scared of them, <laughs> and rightfully so. Yeah. So they're the, probably the biggest. Now, as far as the best goes, I, that's hard, man, um, from that time period. The, are you talking just NWA or are you talking WWF too? I'm talking about any, yeah. So I really like the Heart Foundation a lot. I thought that's they what were I was, one of my that's favorites. One that I was thinking too. I don't know. It's tough. Like there were a lot of great tag teams then, but for some reason you put me on the spot. I can't think of them now. Midnight well, the Bull, Express. Midnight Express, the Bulldogs. Um, the Can Am Connection, the Rock and Roll Express, at one the time or another, the Can Am Connection. <laughs> yeah, you remember all those tag teams they had, like the Can Am Connection, the Young Stallions. Yep. I don't know. They were uh, the Orient Express. That was that was a good tag team back in the day. Yeah. There was another one called the Can Am Express. Right. There was the Can Am Connection and the Can Am Express. Strike force. We can't forget about them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the killer bees. Forget yep. about them either. <clears throat> um, the last voyage of the Demeter. I don't know what the hell that is. It's some sort Although, of vampire movie, I think. Vampires. Although I will say this, I've gone to the damn movie theater more than I have in like the last two years and the last two weeks. Cause I went and saw, you know, and I think I think I talked about this like one of the other shows at some point, but you know we all went out to the theater and I saw uh, Oppenheimer, mm -hmm. and then prior to that had tried to uh, tried to see uh, talk to me, talk to me. Got most of the way through it. And the kid shit their pants, so that was <laughs> that was nice. Really? Yeah. So I got almost to the very end of that movie. And then Savannah, this is so killer, man. Like, because this is the type of person that I've become. And I can remember, oh, I can remember my mother doing the same thing to my dad at one point in time. So Savannah, like, uh, we're just sitting there and we're watching the movie. It's got some like really kind of graphic stuff in it where like a kid like starts like banging his head against a wall and stuff like that. And like blood and tissue and stuff's coming out. Um, and so she gets up and she like takes, she just leaves. And I don't even know what the hell is going on. She takes the kids like to where I'm assuming is the bathroom. Right. Mm -hmm. And, uh, she comes back in 
it's about 10, 15 minutes later, and she like looks really pissed. And I'm like, uh oh. I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I turned to her and I was like, what's wrong with you? And she goes, you know, we should be in here watching this own shit with these kids, you goddamn son bitch, all this shit. I don't think she said son bitch word, but she did say the rest of that stuff. And I'm like, I asked the kids before they came if they wanted to come and see it. And they said, I told them there's going to be demonic shit in it. And they said they did. And they, it's like, it ain't my fault they can't sit through it. When I was their age, I was watching Tell kids, kids to quit being pussies. But anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> I learned a valuable lesson about like not attempting to take the children to see like R-rated movies probably anymore. R-rated like demonic possession movies at least. Let me ask you this though. I don't know yeah. anything about that movie, The Last Voyage of the Demeter, but is anybody surprised that nobody wanted to fucking see a movie called The Last Voyage of the Demeter? <laughs> Like what? God, that's a horrible name. That is a terrible freaking name for a movie. Like the name alone makes me never want to see it. I don't even know what it's really about, but it just sounds stupid to me. Like it sounds ridiculous. I want to go see the last voyage of the Demeter, and mm. then I'm going to go play some Dungeons and Dragons. Let me Stick ask my you. Thumb up my butt. Mm. Let me ask you something. Are you a Demeter dreamer? <laughs> <laughs> I like the last voyage of the Demeter. So no, I as to answer um Scott there, like I did go back and watch the ending of it somewhere else legally, of course. Um but you know, and I swear to God, man, there was probably ten minutes left in that fucking movie and we had to leave because they were like shitting ourselves. To say that I was upset might be an understatement. The uh, Adam is asking about the pumpkin on the floor. So you're talking about that one right there. That is a vintage, which I can't say his name anymore because people would think, you know, that's the same one from back in the day, Uncle Bill. You remember oh, his name? Wow. Don't yeah. say he's a name above a whisper. You can't because he'll come back. But yeah. I remember. But yeah, that's probably from like the mid 90s, I guess. I've had that for hell and ever. Thank you, though speaking of which oh so like one of my favorite things is to go like right now because a lot of stores are carrying some cool halloween stuff i don't think i have anything eh. i got this at uh this is a salt salt shaker and this is the pepper shaker I, these were at uh, oh that's nice these were at cracker barrel so i like to go around and see what kind of crap they've got so i can decorate and Hobby Lobby, right? You would think Hobby Lobby would have all kinds of Halloween shit. Yeah, they probably do. Thing. Not a damn thing. No. So I, I got to thinking, though. I got to thinking, right? Because. Thinking, thinking, thinking. Mm, about yeah, it's yeah. a conspiracy oh, against oh. Halloween. Yeah. Christian Company. Okay. Hobby Lobby's not even open on Sundays. You're right. They don't. They're not going to do Halloween. They already have a ton. We're talking almost probably like half of the store for Christmas stuff. They've already. And I'm looking for Halloween stuff, and they have fall stuff. They have just pumpkins, like with nothing on them, and like fodder, fodder shock or whatever the hell that shit's called. They got that. <laughs> Father shock, baby. Let me tell you something. I'm gonna smack that somebody be, right in the father shock. That'd be a killer fucking name for a tag team. Father shock. <laughs> Jimmy and Jeff fodder. Yeah. Father shock. But yeah, I, I was shocked at first, and then I got to thinking, yeah, they're they're crazy like Christian company. So that's probably why. Um. Yeah, we're gonna go back through the questions here. I'm I'm trying to catch up. The Wicker Man, there's a steel book coming out on that. Jonathan Sonko has a thoughts. I, I think about well, the, the movie itself uh, is great. Yeah, I've already pre ordered the goddamn thing, which is why see here's the deal, man. And I'm not I'm not even gonna lie, because I feel like there's probably a lot of people in the boat that I'm in right now. I'm selling off a bunch of stuff that I don't have any need for because I bought like a ton of shit here recently. And I don't need to be buying this much stuff, but like they seem like they're releasing something killer every week. So 
I bought that. Multiple I things. Yeah, I pre-ordered that Wicker Man thing. I just got May in. I've got It Follows coming from Second Side. It's like just one thing. After, I've got all that stuff from Severin that just shipped. It's like Vinegar Syndrome's got a sale coming. That damn Labor Day sale or whatever. Oh, yeah, it's that's like, coming up. Uh, yeah, that's not a, that's a day sale too. So that'll be one that's like at, at noon. And I'm trying to take that day off. So if you want to, we may be able to do that shit together. I have to work on that day. I don't get off till uh, Monday, the fourth. Yeah, but it's it's lunchtime. I mean, lunch? I, yeah, I mean, I guess I could take like you minutes. asshole. Every time I do that, though, I feel like I'm rushed as hell. But yeah, I will. Um. Well, we'll see. I don't even have the day off yet, but we'll we'll see. I think I'll get it off because I really don't want to work on a day that's the first and the third fucking people get their checks and it's fucking right before a holiday. It's never good. No, you're right. That's a good day to take off. But yeah, I mean, we were just kind of wanting to do like a little, a brief tribute show tonight, uh, talking about, cause we hadn't talked about it, the Terry Funk thing, the Bray Wyatt thing and everything. And there's still a lot more that's probably going to come out about the Bray Wyatt situation. Um, but yeah, I mean, um, the, the whole thing just shocked me and I'm still kind of like, what in the hell, man? That's just so out of left field. But, uh, Wes Ray said that he gave up on AEW after Cody left. Now here, I'm not a huge Cody Rhodes fan, but I think there's something to that. I do too. When Cody left, like a lot, whatever storylines they did have was gone. Like, and they never really came back. And any sort of structure and everything was pretty much gone too. So I think he did a lot more backstage than they were letting on. I do too. And plus I think Tony Khan is just an idiot. Tony Khan is like Eric Bischoff without like any ideas. <laughs> Eric Bischoff at least had one or two ideas that were really good. And Tony Khan doesn't have any, but he just follows around the boys and shit. It looks like. Crater told me that it was Tony Khan dressed up as Leatherface during that segment last week. I hope so. <laughs> That'd be amazing. I was like, if that's true, that would be, yeah, that's totally believable though, too. Did you, I don't know what made me think of this, but like, cause it doesn't really have anything to do with Leatherface, but have you been watching any of the dark side of the rings? Yeah. I, I think okay. I've got them all except for, I think the Marty Jannetty one I haven't watched yet. That's, that's I, it. I think I've seen all of them. So that's that. the best one. I mean, it, it's actually the best one by far. Maybe the the one about Candido is up there, but like the the Gennady one, <laughs> it's just so out there, man. That like, yeah, I've still not watched. Yeah. Maybe I'll get to it this weekend. But uh, oh my god, yeah, Bischoff a, is going to be in Pikeville tomorrow too. I forgot about that. That's the the Pikeville Comic Con. He won't be there, but that I mean, he's advertised to be there. What's he going to no show? <laughs> That'd be yeah, bad. I, there, there ain't no way he'll be there. I can guarantee you that right uh, now. I saw that Goose has a table up there for the Here to Chew Bubblegum podcast. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. We were thinking about going, but I'm like, I went there last year, man, and there was nothing like going on. And all those guys had already left. Like, we got there. It was like a Saturday. I want to say it was probably about 1 o'clock. All those wrestlers had left. Like, I don't know when they were there, how long, that maybe like an hour or whatever. I know Jake the Snake was supposed to be there. He was gone. Like, yeah. I think Greg the Hammer, a couple other guys, like, they were all gone. I think the big reason I'm over the convention scene, well, that one's just like a little, little fucking hole in a wall one, but just the prices. Like, I can't do it. I'm not paying some fucker $60 and then they're wanting another $40 to take a picture with them. Fuck you, man. I ain't doing that shit. No. I got other shit I'd rather spend my money on. There's no that. way. No, I'm not paying 50 or 60 bucks for autograph and a picture and all what, like each separately and all that crap. Yeah. I don't really understand how people are doing that nowadays either. With the way things are, like how high shit it, like you go in there and drop like a hundred dollars on like one person and just yeah. keep doing that over I'm and over and over again. I mean, really, like, if you add these up and some of the people are spending thousands of dollars at these shows, like the the big Halloween show that's coming up that Sean Clark is, you're talking, if you wanted to get everybody's autograph from that, you're easily out two or $3,000, I bet. Guarantee it. Yeah. Easily. 
Speaking of which, though, are uh, you excited about the uh, the uh, chalice uh, figure from uh, Halloween 3 that they're doing a limited edition of? I would be if I didn't have that damn figure like right back there like already. I got to hand it Sean Clark, though. That's clever, man. I mean, yeah. he, he did have to get it licensed through Universal, so I don't know how much that costs. Probably a little bit. So for people that don't know, like there was a Night of the Creeps Tom Atkins figure, right? And for the 45th, you know, uh, Halloween convention that they're doing, I'm guessing Sean Clark commissioned to have like a Dr. Chalice figure made. And it's the same figure. It's exactly the same, except it's got like a different like set different of clothes. clothes. Yeah. Carter says you need to show the kids Henry Portrait of a Serial Killer next. I feel like that would probably go over better than than Talk to Me did. Yeah, I haven't seen Talk to Me, but it must have some disturbing shit in it. It's just when you see it, like you probably understand why kids would probably be freaked out. But it's not really that gory or anything, like which is why I was really kind of confused. But I guess it does have a lot of like ghost jump scare kind of stuff in it that would make little kids uncomfortable. I just feel like little kids aren't the same anymore, man. Like, no, they're built different these days. Yep. Adam is wanting a Saturday Nightmare shirt. Eh, we might look into that. The mayor says that the voyage of the Demeter is uh, when Dracula comes to London, it is one chapter in the Dracula novel. I'm, I, God, I don't give a shit. I really don't give a shit about Dracula anymore, man. I'm bored to death with that stuff. It plays to people who read the Dracula novel, which how many people is that nowadays? How many people is that nowadays? It's actually going to the damn movie theater. Looking at the box office is telling me it's not very many. I'll tell you though, people, cause people are bringing up on here too in the chat a lot about like NECA figures and screen factory figures and stuff like that like for cropsy and things like that i don't know what the deal is with NECA, but they have not been releasing figures like they were now they used to every year they would have a, a line of figures like six or seven different figures that they would do mm -hmm. and they don't release anything anymore like i'm you might get like you know, two or three different variations of figures. Like they did an Elvira one and they did like a variation of that same figure, like within mm. like six months. But that, and then they did a couple of Jaws figures, but I haven't seen anything else in like the last two years really that was mentionable. Yeah, I, don't I don't really know follow, the, I don't follow the figure thing like you do, but I'm guessing that they switched to another, like, I don't know if they're doing superheroes now or if they're doing some other type of like action figure. They're not doing horror figures like they were though. Wild Wrangler's got an interesting one. You have a favorite folk horror movie? I don't know that many folk horror movies except for Wicker Man. If you classify that as one. Yeah, you could do uh um Midsummer, I guess would be kind of like folk horror. Yeah. Right. There's a there's a subgenre for it. Eyes of Fire is like a, that from the eighties is a folk horror. That's true. <clears throat> Marty Janetti killed a guy in a bowling alley. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, I had heard this too, and this is interesting. Like Black Christmas was I heard that fav favorite horror movie. He used to watch it every Christmas. It came out in seventy four. He passed away in seventy seven. His family watches it every year in his honor. That would be the oddest damn thing ever to watch that movie like at Christmas. And I don't honor. believe that last part. I don't think that happened. Maybe it does. I don't know. What's your favorite Kayla Perkins movie? That's a question on here. Um, probably Haddonfield. That's the best one. No. Um, CK and Uncle Bill Bobbleheads. That's probably never going to happen, but who knows? technology the way it's moving around i mean who we, we can do one so before we get out of here we're gonna try to keep this to an hour but we'll see timu boys we was originally i'm gonna, gonna lead it up for you guys we was originally going to do uh, a series of videos called uh, give me 20 where we spend 20 dollars on horror stuff 
at different sites. So this mm. the first one was going to be Timu because I was like, oh, people are opening Timu packages. Yeah. We'll each have a twenty dollar um, limit and get twenty dollars worth of stuff. Don't you think it sounds like it's cool? And you was like, oh yeah. Listen, Let's do I, it. if I'm being honest with you, I went on that site and I was like, this is the biggest bunch of fucking junk ever. I don't want to order any of this. And I just never ordered it. <laughs> well, fuck you, buddy. You're about to be jealous. All right. Because this is ready. my $20 worth right here. It's like in this big ball. Okay. And all, they ship all of their shit like this. Like Sarah ordered a bunch of clothes and like it's just in a bigger version of like a big random bag of shit. Big old satchel. It's a big old bag. So th- keep in mind that the the contents of this whole bag was twenty dollars or less. So yeah, I think you have to spend fifteen dollars to get free shipping. At, uh, uh, so the first item is the smallest item. Yeah, I can't believe they couldn't get free shipping on that where they ship those. I kind of got this to include like on. Uh, package that we mail out and shit. And I didn't really know how big it was, but I mean, I guess it's fine. <laughs> it's, uh, what the fuck is that? It's Jack o' Lantern stickers, a big roll of them. Uh, that's killer. <laughs> you can put that's, that on your packages and stuff when you yeah, mail them out. That's what I was going to say. I can put, put a couple on each package. So that was included in the $20. Uh, so you don't you feel bad now, Uncle Bill? You could have got in on that. I kind of do now, yeah. Hell, I don't think I can get one of them off. Get you some stickers. Yeah, I got it off. It sticks, too. Well, look. Hmm. Okay. Good job. All right, so there's this. That's the small side, and that was to just put it over the, I think, the $20 limit or whatever. Now, Push this to is, the limit. This one's going to be fun, Uncle Bill, because when we were growing up, the only Michael Myers mask you could get, and we talked to Sean Clark about this, and I think he called it Don Post the Mask. That's what it was called. And you can get it at Spencer's. That was the only one that I ever saw. Yep. But now they're everywhere. And this one right here <laughs> is a $10. I think it was like $8.95 Michael Myers mask. Right. So you're getting jealous right now. I can tell. Oh, yeah. Like I should have, I should have. I should have bought this bunch of trash. Is that trash? I got to get the comments here. Trash it. Look, boss. I made a quality decision to spend twenty dollars a team move. You sure did. I bet this shit stinks. You probably die. Oh my god! It smells like a damn balloon. <laughs> yeah, y'all put a package <laughs> of balloons. Yeah. It's probably laced with asbestos or something. Yeah, probably. Actually, you push, it, not, push it to the limit here. This is not too terrible, really, considering how cheap it was. Walk along the okay. razor's edge. But it ain't that terrifying. Oh, that. <laughs> Look at that shit. It looks yeah. like one of them ghosts from Pac-Man or something at the bottom. Look here. Yeah. Hell yeah. Somebody wanted to be Michael Myers on the cheap. Yeah. You could do it. Look at that hair. Look at it. That's not, that's not bad right there for how much was it it was less than ten dollars <laughs> that's that's pretty good yeah look at that boys yeah there's nothing wrong with that the devil's eyes mm. it looks like if a stiff wind blows that thing's gonna fucking cut in half it is <laughs> uh kind of thin latex comments in the chat that let us know what you think of uh See if I can solo it here. Check his shit out. <laughs> that doesn't help. That doesn't help me. Like, <laughs> <damn thing. laughs> I would almost try to put it on, but I don't want my head to smell like balloons for a fucking all night. I don't be able to go to sleep. <laughs> oh, my God. Put it on. Try it on. Hell on. no. Hell Come no. On. This damn thing smells like balloons, boy. Well, you, you, you can't wash the fucking thing. Just put it on. No, what are you going to do? No, put it in the bathtub? Not, you're not going to talk me into it. Well, I'm going to let it set and try to form back into like a... Look at it. He looks crushed. Yeah. Scott uh, Wrestling Collection says that it's uh, better <laughs> than the Halloween 4 mask. So, it's know. better than 4 or 5, really. 
actually, to be honest with you, it's not that terrible considering how cheap it is. But I mean, if I was a kid, like I would be like excited as hell. Here's what you could do though, honestly though. If you could figure out a way to kind of like what you say, like, you know, fix it up a bit. Yeah. You just take it and kind of try to mess with it and make it into something, it might be killer. Yeah, I mean, I've definitely seen worse Myers than that, so mm. look her. That's something special though. Yeah. So you could have got that. Now, this one right here, I've never heard anybody complain about this. Everybody puts this thing over. Okay. And this is the biggest item in the package. Mm. And this probably comes, yeah, I can tell it comes from fucking Hong Kong. Look at it. Yep. What is it with Hong Kong? Those orange damn like cardboard manila boxes. Envelopes and stuff. All right. So this was also like eight dollars and something or nine dollars and something comes with a little stand all right look at this look at this it's got some weight to it too oh that's cool yeah yeah and, uh, let's see they say that you can i don't know if you can or not you gonna fuck around with that and find out no maybe this one you can't I think that there are uh, some of them that actually, no, this is just like a, hmm? if you can move it, I don't know how. Yeah. Let's look on the, is there an instruction book? What's, I hope not. You're going to open the gateway to hell. I know you got to, <laughs> you got to rub on that part there. Rub on mm. it. Yeah. I don't, there are some of these that actually do move, but I don't think this one does. Matt says you can open it. It's just difficult. Really? That's what he says. Let's play with it here then. I'm Jackson really not... Jack says you got to give it your soul for it to open. It does have weight to it though, man. Like it is not light. So I don't know how they made it, but uh, it's pretty cool. And if you uh, nice. have the... Uh, the stand, right? You just set it on the stand, and uh, there you go. <laughs> Chatterbot's gonna come out and chatter your dick on live stream. <laughs> uh, they should you, put that in one of them Hellraiser movies. How many of you guys pre ordered the 4K box set, the Hellraiser 4K set? Because if you didn't pre order it, your ass ain't getting it. All the woke, creepy Kentuckians in here. <laughs> Look what he said. <laughs> Ready for the first female Michael Myers. <laughs> That's the best gimmick ever. <laughs> <laughs> These people. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. All right. That's, that is pretty woke. I'll give him that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but I'm not seeing. I mean, there probably is a way to open this, but yeah, I, maybe I shouldn't fool with it. I don't think you should. Hmm. You don't want to go down that road. It seems pretty damn solid to me. You got to hmm. fuck with it. So, anyway. Yeah. Anything else going on you wanted to talk about on here for the pit but at night for August? Yeah, there's always something to talk about. All kinds of physical media shit. Yeah, I mean, the one that got me the most, and I'm kind of depressed about it, is that uh, Severin got a hold of Opera, Argento's Opera. So now we're going to have to pay $80 for a fucking regular edition of that. Limited edition. That's, uh, well, they, they still haven't done the regular edition of Four Flies on Great Bell, but who knows if they ever will. Yeah, they will. They'll actually just find a bunch of those uh, special editions hidden in the closet somewhere, according to them. But opera will be seventy or eighty dollars. I guarantee it. It'll have some stupid pins with it or something. They'll have some like oh, yeah. bunch of shit with it. Some kind of gimmick with it. Dumb asses at Saber. They'll do like um, well, Cemetery Man. They're doing Cemetery Man. As yeah, well. I don't care about that movie. Though. 
don't really know. I think a lot of people, like if you have not seen the movie and you hear all the hype for it, they're going to be let down by it. I really, you would, am. yeah, you would think it was great. It's really not. I mean, it's okay, but it's not like I've watched. That was the first Anchor Bay DVD that we ever got to review, probably whatever it was, 17 years ago or whatever. I've watched it twice since then. That was it. And I've never really, I mean, some people love it. I mean, I guess different strokes for different uh, different folks. But eh, I think a lot of people, if you've not seen it, you're probably going to be uh, disappointed. I think so too. I mean, there's only one scene in that movie that I even remember, and you know what scene it is. Same scene everybody remembers, and the only thing it's really known for. Um, yeah. Somebody brought up Nightmare on Elm Street, but I had heard that Nightmare on Elm Street is going to release a 4K of the first film at least, which leads me to think they got to be doing something with that man. Well, I mean, it's not going to be until next year. Yeah, I would just but do still, a whole box set. I think they're going to do something with the whole thing, like in the very near future. We'll see. I mean, I definitely ain't doing nothing before 2024 though. Cause that's the 40th right. anniversary. I think that they've got, they, they definitely will do something for the first movie, but I think at this point they should do something for the whole series. Yeah. Because at this point, I think that three and four are probably more popular than the first one. Really? Yeah. I mean, in terms of fans and genre people, like I don't, I don't know about five, but yeah, definitely three and four. Jackson, Jack, did you hear the that damn mask has caused my fucking hand to stink? It smells like balloons. Oh, Blumpkin House has the rights to do a new Nightmare on Elm Street movie. I don't know if that's true. I've heard, I heard, yeah, I heard say, that. I heard people say that may be bullshit, but time will tell. The opera release, though, from Severin, like, eventually, that's probably something that I'll get. But, like, I'm not falling for their bullshit anymore. Their limited edition. Oh, yeah. you get it this weekend? You ain't ever going to get it. Because they're yeah. a bunch of fucking liars, man. Why even fucking do that? Blurring images at conventions and shit. It's limited. You can't ever get it again, except at any convention that they're ever at for, like, the next 10 years. You know what? I did see something that um you know a lot of those releases that terror vision is coming out with they've talked oh about. yeah so there's some of them i think hollow gate is one of them where they don't have the source materials so like that one is from the vhs master tape that's gonna look like dog shit then <laughs> and then they bought a bunch from the same company and the source material is gone for everything so those are all going to be mastered from. Man. So I don't know which movies are in that that company, but like, um, yeah, there's going to be a lot of them that's just going to be like VHS transfers. That that's kind of that's kind of depressing. Evidently, was... yeah, evidently, what it is is, uh, and they've done this with TV shows. We've talked about it before, where they, you know, it's filmed on film, but yeah. they edit it on tape. I guess it's cheaper to do it that way. And that's the masters. They were on tape. <laughs> These some of these questions, man. What I is just can't. You... Why do you guys always say easier? When do we say that? I don't even understand that. That's the dumbest question that's possibly ever been put on here. And that's easier, easier, easier. Is he easier? Why do we say easier or why is it that we're saying that the way that we're saying it? Because if you haven't noticed, we're from Eastern Kentucky, you fucking lug nut. Like, how do you think that we're going to say stuff? Yeah. I mean, you can pick uh, apart our uh, pronunciations on any damn thing. Uh, if you want to, but I don't give do, a fuck if you do or not. Why do people exist? So, but other than that, though, um, Cemetery Man, Opera, the Nightmare on Elm Street 4K. You got the Vinegar Syndrome sale coming up. Arrow announced a big box set of the Coffin Joe collection, which people have been fucking going on about that for years and years and years. Yeah. And <clears throat> you can say what you want to about that set. I'm not that familiar with those movies. But the set retails <laughs> for what is it? Hold on. I don't know if you knew this or not, but. Oh, really? 
Yeah. I thought it was Oklahoma. That's what Dana always told me. <laughs> A little known fact. <laughs> Dude, uh, let me let me say this. I deleted it. But I had put together a compilation of that whole thing. Oh, my God. And I was like, if I put this up, she's going to fucking hate me, at least. Because it was it was just great. But I was like, I, I've got to use restraint and just, you know. <laughs> I'm glad you talked your way through I, del- <laughs> I deleted. I was like, because it literally it probably took me, you know couple of hours to edit a damn thing and then i watched it back and i was like god damn it this is one of the best fucking things ever but i can't <laughs> i can't i just can't do it how could you do it then how could you just get rid of it i had to i understand had to do sometimes right. it's just not worth it with great power comes great responsibility right yeah you gotta know when to hold them then know when to fold them right speaking of which Danielle's fart jar. Boy, we're working on the song. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited rough, about it. Rough sketches of the it. song. Yeah. We need to get together and actually record the whole song. Because, you know, be. I, I have this vocal microphone now. We can talk about Danielle's fart jar. It's going to be like an old fucking Keith Whitley song soon. Yeah. We could even post it on Twitter and tag her in it. Hey, Danielle, we wrote a song. It's, it's about, your about fart our jar. fart jar. You, I would love to do that, by the way, because you know how she is. She'd be like, "What? What is this? Something? Somebody put out something about my fart jar?" <laughs> then you had a fart jar. She kept it by our table, and when she'd get the urge, she filled it up. She had a fart jar. About 20 years old now. <laughs> it holds all her farts until somebody wants a hoof. We got to come up with a chorus for that. That'd be amazing. Yeah. It doesn't really need to be like a spoof, but we can go along the lines of like the, the gambler. Right. You know, have it similar, but not, it didn't have to be exactly. I'll tell right. you what I was doing though. Actually, wasn't the gambler. It was that fucking song that he did the, what it was like the coward of the town or something like that? Well, all of them sound about the same. Yeah, they, <laughs> they do. That one sounds basically exactly the same. Oh. Anyway, yeah, we can say wrote a song about you. Want to hear it? Here it go. I'd love to hear like just her response to that song, dude. But what yeah, the hell are they talking about? That's, that's, in, de- part, that's that. in development. The good thing now is like, I mean, it's different because. We can still record this shit, but it's usually on our phone separately. We'll have to have a recording session with you and I both in the same spot and get it See, done. Perfect. Yeah, that's been my idea here for a while, though, is to try to do something like that. Like have some sort of a acoustic set or show or something like that where we're both in the same room. I don't know how exactly we do that, but we'll figure it out. Yeah. I think... I honestly think we could almost do it on this, but it would be just a slight delay, right? It's not going right. to be perfect. But but some other stuff coming up, guys. I guess we're going to get rolling here in just a second. We appreciate everybody coming out. Um, it seems like there's actually more people late at night on a weeknight that come to these shows, Uncle Bill. So how weird is that? That's I don't know if we've nice. ever done one of these on a Friday night. I don't think so. <clears throat> Maybe not. So, but I'm might, disappointed in everybody. We might learn right. from this. We've we've had ninety some people. We didn't get over a hundred, but I don't know who all. You said uh, some other people streaming, but they don't really matter. We're the ones that matter, so they should come over here to us. But anyway, uh, some stuff we've got coming up. We are working right now on the Masters of Horror series. That one is going to be September the third. What is that? A week from Monday? Is it on Monday? No, September the third's a Sunday. I'm pretty sure it's a Sunday. Okay, yeah. so it's Memorial uh, uh, Day weekend, and we're also doing. I think a week from or no, this coming Thursday, we are. Carta requested 
us to do a Tragedies in Tinseltown episode on Ken Russell's The Devils, which I've never seen uh, before. I want to check it out for the first time. It's the uncut version. So that's coming up, I think, Shh, this that, Thursday. I hear that movie's insane, man. I'm kind of. It's one of Steve's favorites, I bet. I've never seen it, so I'm curious. I've never seen it either. But um, got that coming up. The vinegar syndrome sale as well is coming up on the first. Um, so lots of stuff. Anything else you got you wanted to mention on here that uh, we may have coming up? Oh, fuck. not really. I mean, at some point, I think that. Uh, are you going to open the gate of hell over here? In this fucking stream. At some point. I'm <laughs> I'm pretty sure that we'll uh, get, to, I'll get together with uh, Mark and, and Rambo and do another one of the you no know, news, but I don't know when exactly that'll be. Um, other than that, no, I mean, at some point here soon, after we get done with all this stuff with the masters of horror and the, and all the other stuff, like, uh, got to bring back tour of Italy. I feel like, I feel oh, like yeah. I got to bring that back around like Halloween. Like around mm. October, first part of October. I don't know, man. You could all you could honestly do that anytime, really, though. You could do it. You'll bring uh, it back for uh Thanksgiving. Christmas, Christmas time. Yeah, because yeah, everybody loves Italian food on Christmas. I make my wife fix fucking lasagna, I think, every year on Christmas. Really? Um, yeah, shit's fucking good. That's like that time my grandmother made like shrimp cocktail and shit for uh, Christmas. I was like, what in the fuck is going ain't on? nothing wrong with that. Don't you like shrimp cocktail? Asshole? I like shrimp cocktail. I don't like it at fucking Christmas, though. No. Why not? What difference is it? You're supposed to have ham. At Christmas. Everybody knows this shit. Supposed to have um, Christmas I'm ham. Not a, I'm not a ham person. God almighty. I'd rather have turkey and dressing if I want to have shit like that. What? You don't like ham? Who the fuck doesn't like ham? I mean... I don't hate ham, but I'm not really. I, that's not my go-to. Well, you need a good sugar glazed ham with honey. Well, you got to have that pineapple yeah. on top of it and shit. Big old pineapple with a cherry on it. But anyway, we appreciate those of you that did show up and those of you that didn't go fuck yourself. Fuck yourself and no one else. <laughs> <laughs> Sing it to them. Hold on, if I can remember it. I think I'm in drop D. Sing it like Creed would do. Fuck yourself and no one else. Uh, Tonight you can go fuck, fuck, fuck yourself. Fuck yourself and no one else. Tonight you can go fuck yourself. Fuck yourself. And no one else in the butt. Fuck yourself. Go oh, fuck, fuck yourself. yourself. Go oh, fuck, fuck yourself. yourself. Go, Go fuck, fuck yourself. You'll learn to break down part again. That's all like people that when Drop D came out. Every fucking song was like that, too. It would always be some part where they would be like. Like the Ultimate Warrior. People love Drop D. Fuck you, bitch. I'm going to kill your ass, bitch. Bitch, bitch. <laughs> fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. I'm going to kill your ass. Fuck you, bitch. Bitch, bitch, bitch. Bitch, bitch. <laughs> fuck you, bitch. Fuck you, bitch. So let me get this straight. You deleted that other one. But you're fine with playing that. Well, that's old. You probably don't even remember that. That's killer. I thought that was awesome, though. That, that number was a, that was a memorable tune. It was. But, boys, we appreciate everybody uh, joining us tonight. It's a little bit late. I'm going to take me a yummy gummy and go to sleep. How's that sound? How you doing with them gummies, anyway? <laughs> They, you don't really get, I mean, the ones that I've got, you don't get get buzzed from or anything. It just kind of relaxes you. So it doesn't have any real effect? Or you don't get like tore up or anything on them? Not really. You sleep really good. Where in the fuck did you get them anyway? I ordered them on online. 
Just checking for a friend. Mm. I'll link you up. All right, boys, but uh, we appreciate everybody uh, tuning in, and we will catch you guys next time. Over at Dead Pit. Com. Give us a thumbs God, up. Fuck all of you. Off you butts. Like, subscribe, and if you subscribe, here's something else you can do. Once you subscribe, you can click the bell notification, right? And it'll notify you anytime that Dead Pit puts up new shit. Or don't. I really don't give a f if you do. Or I don't. want you to. I want you to. <laughs> I don't let's, care. let's keep our community growing here on I, YouTube. I don't, I don't like it. I don't want you to do nothing. Listen, they need to do that, pal. No, don't you yeah. dare touch it. Thumbs up. Subscribe. And <laughs> click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirts. On T Public, there are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The Hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com. Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Dead Pit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on, in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pit on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tears start at only $1.